Welcome to Inspiring Elders, a 13-part documentary produced and presented by Marie-Angeline Lascaux with the support of the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland. What happens physiologically and psychologically as we grow older? What is the role of an elder in our society? What does positive aging mean? What part does nutrition play in remaining fit and healthy? And why is it so important to remain active in our later years? Why do so many of our elders engage in music, art, dance, poetry? Can we start a new careers in our 50s and 60s? What is the role of spirituality? And what does it mean to live a fulfilled life? All these questions and more will be answered by a panel of experts, including a professor of gerontology, medical doctors, an Ayurvedic doctor, a homeopath, a psychologist, dancers, writers, artists, teachers, healers, all of whom share passion for life and a commitment to remain engaged with the younger generation. In this program, which is the last of our series, you will hear insights from Dolores Whelan, Annette Peard, Leslie Andelman, Mary Brady, Ailish Kelly, Paddy McMahon, Fred Walker, Professor Eamon O'Shea, Joanna Banks, Eamon Timmins, Gabriel Kirby, Dr. Eric Dilworth, Mairead Conlon, Mo Griffin, the late Mary Morrisini, Sister Stanislaus Kennedy, Tom Wynn, Sister Rachel, Lucy Johnson and Dr. Don Brennan. Age is a state of mind. You're as old as your fear and as young as your love. Being of a certain age actually brings a greater energy to what you're doing and to people around you and sharing because you have experiences that young people wouldn't have had. Older people have lived through a much slower time and they can bring all that energy and that knowledge to share in circles and it's wonderful. There is no secret. You live your life things appear in your life you choose to do certain things there is always a choice but the mind will tell us sometimes that there is none well when you're doing anything creative I think you're very much in the present and that's a good place to be it's the only place to be I think, I think doing creative things are, is very kind of liberating. It, it feeds your inner self. We always have to be in the present. We always have to come to the heart. We always have to come to the bigger picture and to realise that we don't have the answers for other people, but we can point the way to them. And the only way we can point the way to them is if we recognise what it is we've experienced in life. For me, old age is very comfortable. I'm able to walk, I'm able to talk, I'm able to listen a bit. Interesting thing is, I suppose, that from the moment we we're born, as we're getting older, so it becomes a matter of adjustment to the different ages. The loss of energy, it doesn't mean that, say, the energy of the soul has changed. That doesn't change. I suppose the only thing I can say is that each age has its own particular highlights. The more that we can accept that and how we can um, adjust to it and perhaps be accommodating of each age in ourselves that we, we can stay young and at the same time accepting the limitations of old age. I 
I tend to look at people in their 80s and the 90s who are healthy, who are wise, who are healthy in mind and body. If you look to them and see what they've got, it's, it's a very self-reliant, not selfish by any means. They're usually very full of compassion. Compassion in an elderly person is extremely healing for themselves and for those around them. It's not a selfless thing, it's very much just being self-contained. It's about the gut feeling, that our guts are the most intelligent part of us. And if we listen to our guts more and listen to our heads less, we'd all be a lot, lot happier. One of the most important things is that we recognise the tremendous bounty there is in older age. But I think we should also be concerned about how we take maximum advantage from older age. I mean, traditionally, older people are seen as wiser. I think we need to think about the facts of the major contribution that older people are making to society, while at the same time acknowledge the fact that some older people themselves are vulnerable and in need of specific intervention and care from governments. I think it's really important that you know, ageing is seen as part of life, that ageing is part of the process of living and dying. And in a practical way, I think, is to maintain the independence of older people for as long as possible, the autonomy of older people for as long as possible, and to empower older people to participate more. I think each generation has something to offer. I think we have wonderful life experience, which I think we hopefully use to help others. But I think we also need to also listen to people of all generations. I think it's a sharing between all the different generations. I would say to an older person, or to any of us who are aging, because we were all aging, Positive ageing means living the life you want to live today and to live that life every day and just not to be worried about what people think and not to be worried about what you should or shouldn't be doing at your age. Your age should have nothing to do with it. You should live the life you want to live and live it to the full. Being old is nothing to do with a number. It's to do with your mind mm -hmm. and it's to do with what you perceive to be important. And I think if one is connected with their inner life, with, with the artistic dimension and the mythical dimension, it's all springtime. One thing that ages a person is the negative. Having a purpose in life and trying to see God's loving hand in everything that happens is a way of staying youthful. Also trying to see the bright side of everything and living in the moment. You know, there are some things you can do nothing about. You can't do anything about the past. It's gone. You can't have it back. So moaning about it and giving out about it is not going to help. Or the future, you can't do too much about that. But what you can do something about is enjoying yourself in the moment. I do really enjoy life. And I think it's very important to laugh at things. I find myself laughing at more and more things that are very serious. I can't take things too seriously. They come and they go. They're here today and they're all gone tomorrow and forgotten. And I kind of take it lightly. I think knowing what your own creative ability and strength are is very important. I think that we come into the world with a couple of gifts. And to come to know what your own gifts are is a great thing. And then to be able to work through those particular gifts with other people, to keep that focus, that particular energy in life and to recognise that we complement each other enormously.
I think the role as an elder is to model a holistic way of living, is to model what it means to be a whole person, is to model what it means to embrace life. It's to model what it means to live the good days and the bad days. It's to model what it means to come towards a place of truth within yourself and pass that truth onto the next generation. That's what it is for me to be an elder. It's to pass the wisdom on. And wisdom is something which can only be found through living. You don't find wisdom in books. You live into wisdom. That's the role of an elder for me. Ireland needs older people. It needs their knowledge, it needs their experience, it needs their civic spiritness, their willingness to give and to contribute and to keep our society together, to run our clubs, our communities, our societies. It needs that desperately and the government for its part needs to support older people to enable them to continue to do that. I think we need to go back to where we were, you know, 30 or 40 years ago where where the family unit and uh, grandmother or grandfather was the most important part and they were the, the centre of wisdom. And I think small children, you know, they need their grandparents, they need that, they need that wisdom, they need that, uh, that light. I think that was very important. To me, the object of the exercise is to make the best of every day and to live each moment with joy and gratitude for what I have. And I have so much. Life is amazing and magic and wonderful. I think we can't underestimate the value of being active in whatever area is good for you. I mean, even just going for a good healthy walk, it's probably one of the best forms of exercise. But I think dancers are blessed in that we have a, a very interesting possibility to do some wonderful movement. You can feel euphoric after a few dances. I don't understand it, but I, I love it. You have to have something to think about in later life to stimulate you in using your brain and then of course the exercise is the most important part. No matter what type of exercise it is, you must exercise all your life and you feel much better for it and remain healthy. We all need intellectual inspiration and nourishment and we all need our bodies cared for. So a fulfilled life for me is when there's that holistic approach to life. What I have come to acknowledge now is that, that the bodies that we have been given are the physical expression of the spirit that we are. So if I look after uh, my body, my spirit will rejoice, will be happy. You have to look after yourself. I mean, on all fronts, you have to remain healthy. You have to eat a really, really sensible diet.
In Ayurveda, there is a saying that if you have the right diet, you will never need medicines. And if you have not the right diet, what use are medicines? In other words, even with the best of medicines, you won't gain health unless you actually also take care of your nutrition. Earth Pharmacy is our gardens, our fields, the goodness that's out there. If people can learn more about it, this is the big thing, isn't it, for people to know and know what to do to be able to keep themselves well and healthy. You see, I believe we, we were created by God for himself, but for one another. So we have an obligation. If we do know anything, reach out and let people know about it. It's all the Lord's work. I definitely put it all down to him. Observe life. Stay centred. Stay present. Eat well. And you'll live in peace and happiness and you'll live for a long life. To sing and to pray within our own native tongue is hugely important because it connects us with our soul. Echt Lebokri, Echt Lebokri, listen to my heart, listen to your heart. Oskil Mokri, open my heart, and your heart could be the heart of the land. The connection between the language and the land is hugely important and the language and our souls is hugely important. Age is like a state of mind, isn't it? If you do something regularly that you love, it keeps you young. Smile and the world smiles with you. Weep and you weep alone. Because in the long run, it's your life. You're in control, it's what you do with it, not anybody else. Life is a spiritual journey, a journey towards wholeness. What's important really is the presence, the presence that we have for each other, being attentive to each other, uh, being compassionate, being, being at peace, you know, being in joy, patience, simplicity, creativity, awareness, truth, beauty, abundance. That's what we need to share with each other. So we need to get back to our soul and we need, we need to realise that less is more. I'm just getting back to the idea of simplicity, of simple things. I suppose as people get older, they've got some quality that's priceless. It's like there's some radiance shining through them. It's like the radiance of a newborn baby. You get that radiance of life, of pure essence. And that, that is pure life. That is pure essence. That is pure consciousness. It's almost as if you become kind of calm and you're content, I think. Instead of getting embroiled in the anxieties and fears and delusions about life, we become more accepting. 
it's about pulling back into yourself, developing a greater awareness of your body. I certainly believe that love is the best medicine and I'm not talking about being in love, I'm talking about self-love, how we give, how we receive love, how we reject love, how specifically we love ourselves and love others. It's all about being. It's all about being in your own space, being still, enjoying whatever comes into your presence. And let everybody in your presence be a guest, be a welcome guest. Enjoy the sunsets, enjoy nature, enjoy being, enjoy the fresh air. Enjoy a, a smile, a laugh. Taste life, enjoy it. It's all very simple. If mind and body are balanced, you express all that is good. However, any imbalance blocks and that inner being is prevented from full manifestation and expression. When we're in our middle years, maybe 25 to 50, it's a time for fulfillment and activity. But after 50, our bodies are more sensitive and we need to take better care of them, be more restful have a, a better routine, eat properly, nourishing foods, and particularly after 75, the actual routines that we live in, the foods that we eat, are more gentle. By keeping the body balanced at this time, when it's growing a little bit more sensitive, we allow the mind to retain increasing integration and increasing connection with that inner potential of our own pure, unbounded, absolute, eternal, immortal being. like to think, yes, that I hadn't passed through life and left it worse. I'd like to think I passed through and left it better, better for the next lot of folk coming up. We will be the one producing the miracles and producing in the change. Looking at our planet and ourselves and our laws, the way we live our lives in a, in a gentle way, this is a responsibility of every single human being on this planet. You were listening to Inspiring Elders, a 13 parts documentary produced and presented by Marie-Angeline Lasco with the support of the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland. This program featured Dolores Whelan, Annette Peard, Leslie Andelman, Mary Brady, Ailish Kelly, Paddy McMahon, Fred Walker, Professor Eamon O'Shea, Joanna Banks, Eamon Timmins, Gabrielle Kirby, Dr. Eric Dilworth, Mairead Conlon, Mary Morrissini, Sister Stanislas Kennedy, Tom Wynn, Sister Rachel, Lucy Johnson and Dr. Don Brennan. The music on this program is from Seamus Brown, and you can find out more about his music on www.brotherseamus.ie If you want to get in touch with any of the contributors, you can contact us through www.springintolive.ie